So a key thing with the overview is it's not just a rephrase of the prompt, it's actually taking a look at the chart and trying to identify key trends that you notice. Preparing for the IELTS test, trying to score a band of nine on a task one academic chart, diagram, or other source of information. Take a look at this video where we'll go through a screen share to discuss why we think an essay can score a band nine. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hello everyone. We're taking a look at another task one academic writing, this time with a line chart. You can see it here. So we have enrollment in ext extracurricular sports. We need to summarize information, identifying the main features, make comparisons, and of course, trying to do it with at least 150 words. We'll be grading this task one using the standard IELTS rubric. We'll be looking at the public of, publicly available one, which is right here. So again, grading things on task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource, grammatical range, and accuracy. Let's begin by taking a look at task achievement. Again, we need to make sure we're fully satisfying the requirements for the task and also having a fully developed response. So let's take a look and see how we're achieving those task achievement goals. If we want this to score an eight or a nine, um, those highest scores on IELTS. Firstly, we need to start with an overview statement and that's what this first sentence is here. So a key thing with the overview is it's not just a rephrase of the prompt, it's actually taking a look at the chart and trying to identify key trends that you notice. Um, so for instance, we see here, basketball and football were the most popular, they had the highest enrollment. And let's see, tennis and volleyball had the smallest number of people taking part, so they had the least enrollment. Um, and then we also mentioned really quick that um, basketball ended up becoming the most popular um, in this chart by the end of the time. So again, for the overview statement, you take a look at the chart and you try to identify some key trends that you notice. So for instance, the most or the least or the highest or the lowest, things like that. So we have our overview statement. That looks good. Next thing we need to make sure is that everything is mentioned. So we can see our body paragraphs are organized by year. We have 2015 within a year, so 2016, 2017, and then lastly, the end of the period, so 2018. Okay, so it looks like this essay is organized by year, um, and that's fine. You wanna have some sort of organization for your writing. Plan how you want to break down your body paragraphs. So let's now make sure everything's included for each of these years. So 2015, football is the highest, Okay, football's the highest, nearly 60 people, nearly 60 people, great. Basketball trailed by about seven, okay, this so basketball was in second. Tennis had the lowest numbers at about 21, and that looks accurate there. And then last, and that was nearly half the size of volleyball, so volleyball had just a little bit less than 40. Okay, so it looks like everything's mentioned for 2015. The next year, tennis grew by about 13. Okay, so we can see tennis going from here to here to about 30, great. Um, volleyball declined to the least popular, so declined to about 30, okay. Football remained relatively the same despite stagnant growth. Okay, so we're indicating it's about the same as the previous year. And basketball grew to nearly 55. Okay, so again, all these things look like they're included for the following year. Next, 2017, basketball grew ending with about 65, and we can see that here. So basketball is now the top spot, about 65, great. Okay. Football and volleyball also grew. The former, referring to volleyball, peaking about, or excuse me, the former, football, peaking about 63. Okay, so we can see that just under basketball. In the latter recording, its highest number, about 41. So we can see that for volleyball. Only tennis fell, decreased in 17. Okay, so the tennis is kind of on its own, great. Looks like everything's there. And then lastly, for our final year, basketball remained ahead of the pack, slightly ahead. Okay, so end of about 50. We say that football lost about 14 compared to the previous year. Okay, and that's seen here. Cool. Volleyball also lost about 20 
And you can see that here dropping from about 40 to almost 20. And then tennis was able to match that. Great, and we see tennis there. So it looks like all the information is covered. It looks like it's organized in a clear way. Um, this will also kind of, we'll hit this again when we talk about the coherence and cohesion, but it looks like it's fully developed. Everything's mentioned and we're satisfying all the requirements. So that looks good. Coherence and cohesion. So we want to make sure our paragraphs and our sentences are linked together. And we also have paragraphs um, that are well managed. Based already on things that we've kind of talked about for task achievement, it seems to me that the paragraphs are pretty well managed. We're organized by years. We, we're typically starting off with either the highest or the lowest spot. Um, I think things feel connected in terms of that. Let's also identify some other transition words or signal words that we see. So for instance, we see while right here, okay, in contrast. We see terms like, for instance, former and latter, indicating relationships to information that was already provided. Okay. However, showing that we're switching the, is, there's some sort of change happening. So for instance, tennis had the lowest number, but then it grew, so it's contrast no longer indicating that something is not true anymore conversely showing in a contrast hmm. also indicating addition okay. despite showing that something is happening even though something else is happening as well In fact, showing that we're going to clarify and give more information. Okay, so there are some other things that we see in terms of in the sentences that are also kind of linking the sentences, but these are, I think, the main ones that I'm noticing right now. Additionally, we want to make sure we're linking our paragraphs a bit. So, for instance, we say we see this within a year. So we're starting off with in 2015, and then we say within a year. So we're kind of linking all the information talking about 2015 with what's going on in the following year. Okay. This continued to, and also starting off by talking about basketball, is linked to how we ended the previous paragraph about basketball. So this paragraph ended with basketball's numbers, and then the next paragraph continues to talk about basketball. So this is a natural kind of link, trying to find similar topics between paragraphs, ending a paragraph with one, starting the next paragraph with that same topic. This is again a way to link your paragraphs naturally. Okay. Um, so those are some of the things I'm seeing just between body paragraphs that are help tying them together and helping your coherence and cohesion category. We'll take away our marks and take a look at our next category, which would be lexical resource. So basically vocabulary. Key things for lexical resource, wide range of vocab, um, rare or minor errors. Again, if you're aiming for an eight or a nine, you need to really watch out for your spelling. Okay, you really, it's very difficult to get an eight or a nine if you have spelling mistakes. Um, so really make sure that your words are appropriate, they're spelled correctly. Um, if you have some words that are almost correct in terms of meaning, but maybe not quite right, that's naturally going to make it hard to get a nine as well. Your, your word choice really needs to be precise and accurate. So let's just kind of identify some of the words that I see that I think are pushing this um, to uh, those higher levels. For instance, surpass. The top spot. To claim the top spot, I'll also include that verb, great. To trail something, so to have a smaller number than something else. How about this? Nearly half the size. So instead of just going directly into what the word is, so volleyball being half the size of another category, like saying what the numbers were. So here we say tennis was at 21. We don't say volleyball had 42. We say it was nearly half the size. Great. So playing with those numbers a little bit and how you express them, it will make your writing feel less mechanical.
How about here? Stagnant growth. That's great. To blossom instead of just saying to grow or to increase. Great. To peak at something at a number. Ahead of the pack. Some collocation here. To witness a trend. I like that. And then also shedding in terms of decreasing, getting smaller to shed something. And then to match or to equal something. Great. So these are some of the words I think are helping push this vocabulary. Uh, I'm not seeing anything that feels inappropriate to me. Um, so I think this is working well for your vocab score. I'm not seeing anything that's misspelled, which means we can talk a little bit about our last category, which would be grammatical range and accuracy. So we need a wide range of structures. Naturally, that is correct. Rare minor errors, again, you really can't afford to have mistakes. So for instance, if you have like verb tense mistakes, things like that, it's going to be hard to get a nine. Uh, maybe if you have the occasional article mistake, it's like a uh, and the, or the zero article, um, or a preposition mistake, depending on what it is, you could maybe still get a nine, but you really need to make sure that your grammatical mistakes are minimal. Every sentence really needs to be correct. Some of the things that I'm seeing, so for instance, our first sentence here is relatively complex. So for instance, we start off with an independent clause. They were the most popular sports, subject, basketball, football, were, verb. Then you have your complement or object. Okay. Then here we have this quick little phrase with the former actually surpassing the latter. And then we get this second clause starting off with while so it's a dependent clause um, so this is a really long sentence you don't want to have too many sentences that are this long in your um, task in general but having one or two i think is fine um, especially for an overview where you're trying to express a lot of information relatively quickly 2015 football claim to top spot so this is our main sentence our independent clause here and then we're describing it a little bit more with a prepositional phrase. Okay, and again, you can do that. I encourage you, if you can add a little bit of information, you know, use things like phrases, um, adjective phrases, noun phrases, um, prepositional phrases, just to give a little bit of additional information without adding a whole other subject and a whole other verb. Um, it just helps provide a little bit more extra information. We then follow that with basketball trailed by about seven participants, a simple sentence. And that's okay. It's okay to have simple sentences in your writing. Not every sentence needs to be complex. It can actually make your writing sound a little bit more natural to have a pause, a shorter sentence that makes it easier for your reader to follow along. Okay? Not every sentence needs to be simple. But if you have a couple of sentences that are longer or more complicated, it's good to add a simple sentence to kind of break up the rhythm and also give your reader a chance to breathe. We then follow that with tennis, which had the lowest number at 21. So we have an adjective clause right here describing tennis. Let's see another clause here. So another dependent clause is volleyball decline. Great. And here we have an adverb clause starting with even. Compare. Um, let's look at this. Let's compare the adjective clause. So even as basketball num basketball's numbers, so basketball's numbers is a subject, grew is a verb. So this is a clause, has a subject and a verb. But then we have even again, but this time we're changing the grammar a little bit. We're using a phrase instead, claiming the highest position. There's no actual verb here. We've made claim into a noun, a gerund phrase, um, and it's part of this whole adverb phrase. So this is Again, another tool that you can use, you know, phrases, not everything needs to be a clause. Okay. A quick note on the word despite, if you want to use words like despite or despite the fact that or in spite of the fact that, those are fine. Just remember that after them, you're not going to use a subject and a verb. You're just going to use a noun or a noun phrase. So for instance, despite falling to 50, here we have a noun phrase. Despite what? Falling to 50. 
noun phrase. You don't want to have a subject and a verb after despite. You just want to have a noun or a noun phrase. Okay. Yeah, so in general, those are some of the grammar things that um, I see in this essay. Again, a couple simple sentences mixed in with others that are much more complicated. We see some adjective clauses, adverb clauses. We also see some phrases, adjective phrases, adverb phrases, and things like that. Um, I see things being used correctly, so I don't see anything I need to highlight in terms of mistakes. Um, I think this could work pretty well for the grammar category. All right, so again, this is an essay that I, th I would expect to get a pretty good score on the IELTS writing, somewhere, somewhere around an eight or a nine. Um, yeah, we'll be taking a look at more writing samples for the task one academic test as well in the future. Thank you for your time. We'll see you in the future video. Take care.